colleagues, over next 20 minutes, I'm going to take up this new molecule, vampedoic acid, which is a new anti-lipid agent now available to us for clinical use. So as we are aware, many patients do not achieve optimal LDC uh, lowering with standard statins, and quite a few of them remain intolerant to statin. And uh, another issue is adherence. You see, within uh, 12 months of starting statins, almost 30% of these individuals give up, and that really increases their risk of developing atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. Additional non-statin treatment options, including azetamide, PCSK9 inhibitors, and bile acid sequestrants are often necessary to further reduce the risk of ASCVD. And the aim of uh, creating an orally active non-statin cholesterol-lowering drug was achieved with bampedoic acid, which is basically a small, linear, hepatospecific molecule providing both a significant LDLC reduction and an anti-inflammatory effect by decreasing the HSCRP. Now, this slide describes the mode of action. So, following an oral administration, vampedoic acid is converted uh, to its active metabolite, vampedoyl coa by ASCVL1 in the liver. ASCVL stands for very long chain of acyl coenzyme A synthase 1. And vampedoyl coenzyme A inhibits the cycloplasmic ACL, which uh, you know triggers upregulation of LDL receptors. Sorry. And ASCVL is not present in muscles, so there is no conversion of vampedoic acid, the pro-drug to the active drug in the muscles. Clearance of both the pro-drug and the active drug are through. Uh, primarily through the kidneys, and vampedoic acid is a weak inhibitor of OAT2, which stands for organic anion transporter 2, and this results in a minor increase in plasma uric, and creatine, uric acid and creatinine levels. So when we use vampedoic acid in a single dose of 180 milligram per day, it's likely to reduce LDLC by a mean 24.5% when given alone, by 18% when given on the top of a maximally tolerated statin ongoing dose, by 38 to 40% when given in a fixed dose combination with azetamide. And the redeeming features are that mempedoic acid does not lead to any new onset risk of new onset diabetes and moderately improves the glycemic profile. And in fact, that is the case, and I'll be showing it in a couple of clinical cases that I am going to present. And management of dyslipidemia is high on priority, and we all are aware that statins are first-line therapy agents, but we remain confronted with certain concerns. Concern number one, how to achieve LDLC target after maximally tolerated dose of statin? Concern number two, what options are available? What options are available to address dyslipidemia in statin intolerant patients? And uh, each one of these concerns I am going to, uh, you know, address with the help of clinical cases from my humble practice. So Amel, a 63-year-old Rajasthani female, presents with mixed dyslipidemia despite regularly taking rosuvastatin full total dose, 40 milligram daily. She reports that she didn't feel too good while on atovastatin 80 milligram earlier, and is hesitant to try any third kind of statin. And she also states that. Uh, these drugs can cause diabetes and feels that the statin is putting her at a higher risk of diabetes because of her family history. Both of her parents having developed type 2 diabetes and ACVD in their early 60s. She's on amlodipine 5 mg for her blood pressure, her thyroid, renal, and liver functions have been normal. After discussing the pros and cons of available options for correcting her residual dyslipidemia, it was mutually agreed to start bampedoic acid 180 milligram once a day as an add-on to our ongoing rosuvastatin 40 milligram per day. So what was the result after three months of additional bampedoic acid 180 milligram given once per day? And that was coupled with uh, very proper reinforcement of lifestyle changes. So if you can see, uh, we had followed certain parameters, waist circumference, BMI, they have improved largely because of the lifestyle adherence. 
BP remained more or less within the desirable level. As he never touched tobacco or alcohol, we could not study the impact. Walking, she used to walk uh, occasionally, maybe three times per week earlier. And after induction of bampedoic acid, she started walking daily, briskly for 30 minutes. Her QRI score, and as a result, came down from an earlier high of 13.8% QRI3 uh, calculator I had used to a decent 11.3%. And if you look at the total cholesterol, LDL cholesterol, and triglyceride, all of them have come down uh, compared to the baseline very, very handsomely. And uh, HDL has only marginally improved. Fasting sugars and HB1C have shown some corrections. SGPT has remained lar largely unaltered. And if you look at the creatinine, uric acid, they have mildly been elevated with a small drop of EGFR, but clinically non-significant. So we'll look at some clinical evidence. And uh, this slide just gives the overview of pampedoic acid phase three programs. We have four studies so far available, 52 week studies, two of them clear harmony and clear wisdom. And clear harmony had the largest population studied around 2,230. And there were two more um, studies we, which had low, very low or no state in background therapy. And they were termed clear serenity. That was a 24 week study and clear tranquility, a 12 week study. And in clear harmony and clear wisdom, all of them were on maximally tolerated statin background therapy. And what did we mean by saying low dose statin in the clear serenity or tranquility trial? Average daily dose of rosuvastatin just 5 milligram, atovastatin 10 milligram, or pitavastatin 2 milligram. But those were very few, most of them were not tolerating that. And what were the results? If you look at the persistent hypercholesteremia despite maximally tolerated statin group, and that, uh, that was uh, covered in clear harmony and clear wisdom, there was around 18% placebo-corrected correction of LDLC percentage uh, 12 weeks down the line compared to the baseline. And when you look at you know, statin intolerant patients in the other group, you will see a handsome 22 to 28% placebo-corrected reduction of LDLC in patients who were either on very, very low dose of uh, statin or, or no dose of statin because of intolerance issue. Now I'll come to the next uh, concern. What options are available to address dyslipidemia in statin intolerant patients? I'm going to describe a case of statin associated muscle symptoms, SAMS. So a 60 year old non-diabetic Gujarati man is referred for management of elevated cholesterol. He has a history of obesity, hypertension, and untreated dyslipidemia. His current medications include aspirin 75 mg daily, panindopril 8 mg, and metoprolol XL 50 mg per day. His physical examination is unremarkable. BP is uh, within acceptable range. However, he has a BMI of 30 kg per meter square. And his recent lipid panel showed a total cholesterol of 246 milligram per deciliter, triglyceride of 184 milligram per deciliter, HDL low 36, and LDL substantially elevated 162 milligram. HSCRP was also elevated at 3 milligram per liter compared to the normal less than 1 milligram. However, his creatinine, uric acid, liver enzymes, TSH, and vitamin D levels were normal. He was advised to lose weight and referred to a weight loss counselor. He was put on rosuvastatin 20 mg daily, but developed intolerance and developed severe aches in his thigh and calf muscles. He discontinued the medication with resolution of his aches. There was immediately he improved as soon as we withdrew. And we then tried to re-challenge him with a modest dose of atovastatin, but he had again recurrence of all those symptoms and we had to stop that. And thereafter, we tried once weekly pitavastatin 2 milligram, the lowest possible challenge that we can give to such patients, along with coenzyme Q containing uh, antioxidants. But he didn't tolerate that too. And his, uh, luckily, his creatinine kinase levels were never elevated during his episodes of muscle aches. And now he flatly refused to accept any kind of statin therapy. So what are the options available to us uh, for such a patient? 
So we are spoiled for choice. We have bile acid sequestrant and fibrates, azetamide, bampedoic acid, and the more expensive PCSK9 inhibitor. So we chose to intensify some and motivated him to accept some lifestyle changes and try to intensify the education regarding that. Advise him to take uh, go for exercises regularly, control his diet, and uh, FDC of bampedoic acid 180 milligram and azetamide 10 milligram was initiated after shared decision making. After I had discussed with him the pros and cons of such a combination. So again, if you see some stunning results, the total cholesterol came down from 246 to 194. Triglycerides from 184 to 130 at the end of three months of addition of FDC of bampedoic acid and azetamide. HDLC marginally improved LDLC again, stunning uh, decrease from 162 to 100 milligram. HSCRP came to near normal range from 3 to 1.2. Uric acid got marginally elevated. Creatinine, as expected, was slightly elevated with a drop of 6 ml of EGFR compared to the the baseline EGFR, and BMI came down substantially thanks to the compliant patient and the very efficient effort of or the counselors. Now, what does the clear tranquility study tell us? It almost echoed what we found in our patient. So, bampedoic acid complements benefits of azetamide in statin intolerant patients, 269 patients evaluated for 12 weeks. And if you see, compared to placebo, 28.5% more, um, more reduction than placebo when LDLC was concerned. Non HDLC, another parameter with that we very strongly pursue after LDLC, came down by a handsome 23.6%. And as you can see, most of other components, total cholesterol, APOB, and HSCRP, very significantly down by 32.5%. And this um, single slide captures the CVOT trial, which was very recently published you know, almost um, in last month, New England Journal of Medicine, 2022, 23 on March 4th. And if you look at this CVOT, it had around 13,970 patients, all of them statin intolerant, and uh, it was a multi-centered double-blind placebo control trial. And what was the final analysis? That bampedoic acid was associated with a lower risk of MACE, major adverse CV events, whether the four-point MACE was looked at, three-point MACE, fatal or non-fatal MI, or coronary revascularization, everything was you know, benefited by use of bampedoic acid in a statistically very, very significant manner. All p-values very statistically significant. But as we use any new molecule, we have to be wary of certain adverse reactions. So hyperuricemia and gout, they appear to be in, uh, the major issues. And in fact, gout is 2.5-fold greater incidence reported with use of bampedoic acid. So what we need to do is to have a baseline estimation of serum uric acid in all patients who are likely candidates for this new molecule, and especially in those with prior history or risk factors for gout. Another uh, you know, adverse reaction reported in literature is rupture of tendon, which is again very, very minuscule, 0.5%. And, but that should remind us to discontinue the molecule, that is bampedoic acid, or not offer to molecule, not offer to patients who are already on corticosteroids or on fluoroquinolones, or who have a history of tendon inflammation, or uh, who have a history of tendon rupture. And about dosage adjustment, luckily there is no dosage adjustment required in um, e e EGFR as low, up to as low as 30 ml per minute, that is, CKD stage 3, you can easily, uh, towards the bottom of the CKD uh, stage 3, we can use this molecule. And hepatic uh, impairment, child poke class A and B are all fine. There is no dosage requirement as far as bampedoic acid, 180 milligram strength is concerned. So my second last slide, what do the experts tell us? This is a position paper of the International Lipid Expert Panel uh, that is published just a few weeks ago. 
if you see ASC with your heterozygous familial hypercholesteremia patients with LDLC 110 to 160, to more than 160, patients who were partially intolerant to statin or patients who were grossly, totally, completely intolerant to statins. If you see, bampedoic acid is, is now being uh, put ahead of PCSK9, not only because of the cost factor, but because of, you know, appreciable efficiency also. So all the four categories, if you see, uh, usage of bampedoic acid drives the LDL to the target of less than 55 milligram per deciliter. So summarizing my talk, Despite current strategies, the burden of ASCVD remains high. Statins, azetamide, bampedoic acid, and PCSK9 inhibitor monoclonal antibodies are the main pharmacological agents currently used for lowering LDL cholesterol. And there are new ones in the pipeline. So you have incliceran and then angiopoietin like three protein inhibitor and CETP cholesterol ester transfer protein inhibitor. One of them prototype being developed it's, is OB cetrapib. And these are all in different stages of development and have the potential to diminish the, the residual risk further. Bampedoic acid with lower LDLC upstream from statins provides a novel alternative for patients with statin intolerance. And the risk of developing myalgia or myopathy increases with the combined. This is one um, thing that we sh need to remember. And it happens typically when uh, it is uh, bampedoic acid is uh, combined with either simvastatin. Uh, or pravastatin, means uh, more than 20 milligram of simvastatin or more than 40 milligram of pra pravastatin. Luckily, these agents are hardly available or used in our country, but no dosage uh, adjustment is necessary in case of combined administration of bampedoic acid with atorvastatin, rosuvastatin, azetami, or PCSK9 inhibitors. So I thank you all very much for your kind attention, and if there are any questions, comments, Criticism, everything is welcome. Thank you.